It is sunrise at Bobblehead Homestead. I am Jeff. Today is Tuesday. It's not even 7 a.m. I am up. The uh, chickens are done being taken care of and I am headed down to the new place for hopefully a day of progress on mostly the kitchen but maybe some other stuff too. This should be a fun one.
There goes Drew. There goes Marcel and Denise and Gidget. They're a wonderful little dog. And there goes uh, Brett and Deborah. And now I'm alone again at Bobblehead Enterprises. Where are they going? Oh, they're going home. Good afternoon for Bobblehead Enterprises. I am Jeff. Today is Wednesday. It is 80 degrees and cloudy. Nice breeze here and there. And everybody has just left me. They all left me. Oh my goodness. I, I don't even know where to start. Um, uh, yeah, yesterday I didn't really do any. It was all action, no talk. And today there was still a lot of action, but uh, now I'm going to talk a lot. So let's go take a look at some of the things that have been done here the past few days. Thanks to incredible people with their generous time and talents. And I can't say thank you enough. Let's look around at what their talents did for me. Let's start where we left off last Saturday. My new friend from Arizona who came out to help. Just so incredible. He came back on Sunday and finished uh, the front porch repair job and some other things. But yeah, the front porch, uh, just using leftovers, uh, put the railing up and uh, got the boards that were rotted out, replaced, shored up some of the joists, uh, wrapped this around, uh, cleaned it up. And yeah, let's go up on the front porch and take a look. And if you'll, yeah, <laughs> the dilapidated, rotting outside porch here and dogman homestead took care of that and then my new friend from arizona has uh patched it up and it's looking good all right yeah not totally cleaned up still have uh the trim from the old windows but uh these boards were a little bit thicker than the decks and so what he was doing is cutting them down a little bit on the ends so that it would be level and I know that took extra time and effort and I would have just thrown a rug over it and <laughs> pretended like it wasn't there but he did the job the right way and I really do appreciate that that uh, this gives more life to this porch and I do appreciate it got the rail there uh, wonderful another project he uh, well these are actually two projects in one that is where the kitchen window was that we took out and so something needed to be done with that and then that white piping there that is the kitchen drain vent so he worked on the kitchen drain uh, hooking that into the current drain and then just used some of my old metal siding stuff and covered up that and I think it looks good it fits in with the rustic nature of the house and it fits in with the uh, with the woodshed and it'll fit in with the well house which you'll see in a, you've already seen as it was worked on but yeah I think it looks great I've got a vent for the kitchen drain it's all hooked up to the drain and ready to go so that was a big help that was a huge help okay that might not look like anything um, that tan cord and then the PVC down there well, my friend from Arizona discovered that that is probably the water line that runs way out there by that fixed chicken coop. And so that was, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's going to be useful. Very, very useful for me. So we just ran a splitter, uh, ran a hose to that existing line. Why did Ben capped off? I don't know. But that's going to be a huge resource for me to uh, extend the water lines to other parts of this property oh and I will say that's not permanent we just uh, did the hose to check it to see if that's exactly where that water line went to and so the hose was just a temporary test but it can it'll suffice for a while until we get a more permanent uh, permanent fix in there oh and you saw Drew's video on the sand filter so that'll free me up for a little while these sand filters are uh, they're interesting but once they start getting saturated with uh, you know we're in the mountains here we get a lot of rust we get a lot of silt and sediment and once they start getting saturated with that they'll clog up and you'll lose water and that's what's been happening to me uh, typically what they say is uh, at that point you've uh, you need to replace the sand so that's something I'm gonna have to do coming up but he bought me you know a few weeks maybe a couple months we'll see how much water I use 
um, but yeah that was uh, that'll get me moved here and uh, keep me going for a little while in addition to those huge projects to help me get moved down here uh, just brainstorming and uh, picking the ideas for uh, kitchen well house uh, shower uh, electric <laughs> All kinds of stuff has given me ideas and direction on uh, how I can take care of those things in the future. So just, just invaluable, and I can't say thank you enough. All right, now, so that was Sunday, and then a bunch of people who were here Monday, and I wasn't here. And, uh, yeah, so here's all the stuff that happened Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. All right, next to that big old cedar tree, and that is a big, beautiful cedar tree. Uh, there was a large stack of firewood that had been processed in the past few weeks and so I will need that space for chickens and all of that firewood got moved to thanks to Floyd and Rita. Let's go take a look at my new woodshed and see what's in the woodshed. Oh yeah, before we get to the woodshed there was a big pile of firewood there to the left of the door. There was a pile to the right of it. You saw me tossing that over there the other day. But yeah, Floyd and Rita went to town, got all of the firewood off of the front porch. And right off the front porch here, I have my lovely new woodshed with many stories and many great people who have contributed to its existence. And look at this. Look at this. All that cedar from the porch, uh, the firewood from beside the cedar tree, a couple of other small piles of firewood. And I've got the start of a uh, pretty large firewood collection. Last time you saw this well house, it was just the two by four framing. So Greg and Dogman and other helpers, people were pitching in here and there. Uh, but those two mainly went to town on this well house. Got all the plywood put up on the walls and uh, and on the roof, uh, we wrapped it all in tar paper. That tar paper was left here. It was already on the property when I got it. And then we've started uh, started putting that metal siding using what I've got. I had stacks and stacks of the metal siding. And uh, that's one good thing, having it on the well house and the house and the woodshed, it, it kind of uh, is a theme that goes together, a rustic theme. Hey, I like it, it works for me because I'm not spending hundreds of dollars to make things look pretty. I'm not about pretty, I'm more about function. But yeah, and uh, today Dogman was going at it. Um, I really appreciate his help. He's been a big help. Now, I've only just met the guy like a month ago and and uh, so awesome. So we've, uh, we've got about half of it on the, of the walls and then we'll still need to put some metal on the roof. I think we ran out of screws and ran out of time and energy mostly energy uh but yeah that is uh that is a great start on it it'll definitely be done before winter oh and they're still loaning me the wood chipper uh brett and deborah's wood chipper brett was up, out here running the wood chipper getting some more there was a large pile of brush and uh the thing is is i could not have burned it there so it would have had to have been hauled somewhere else to burn or chipped it and so he's been chipping away at it and this is the area that i'd like to get cleared out uh so that i can uh set up my brooders for the chickens because there's electricity in the shed and uh that way i can plug in heat sources uh for my brooders if they need it this winter and i've got that 10 by 17 tent so this area yeah, I got a big uh, junk pile. Needs to go to the and yeah. So a couple, couple runs to the dump yard and a uh, little bit of stuff here. Uh, a lot of that is probably too small to chip, so we'll just haul it off and burn it. But that's only like a tenth of the pile of brush that was there. So a huge dent in that, and now it's definitely manageable that I can get this uh taken care of all right coming out here to the chicken runs we didn't work on the chicken coops i've uh pretty much down to the last few details on that that i can take care of myself but there was an old i don't know chicken tractor type thing that was well it was in the way 
So Sherry from the Africa Tiny House and Deborah and the three of us teamed up and we took that apart and that's part of that junk pile you saw over by the shed. And then there was another one here. Uh, just old rotted wood with chicken wire attached to it. It really was a pain to get it apart and into a small enough bundle to haul it off. But uh, so this is great. I wanted those two out of the way because uh, you know, it gets in the way of running my electric fencing and uh, that one, I don't know if I'll tear it apart or uh, or what I'll end up doing with it. And But yeah, getting those two out of the way. Now uh, you can see my fence on the other side of that fence is, well a few feet on the other side of that fence is the National Forest. But now I can run the my electric fencing right along the back and not have to go around and uh, you know finagle the fencing to get around the obstacles still need to do a little bit of weeding out here But nothing big. So yeah, that was a big help from Sherry and Deborah in getting those old uh, chicken tractor things Out of the way Yeah, who were all these great people? Uh, that were down here helping the past few days. I apologize. My brain feels like the rest of my body right now which is not very good at all. So yeah, my new friend from Arizona, I'd love to sit around and share stories with him for you know a good week. Uh, lots of common interests and common experiences. That was, uh, it's great to meet new people like that. It really is. So, uh, the past few days, let's see, we've had Mike from Dogman Homestead. Of course, Drew from Dutch Creek Cabin. He's been uh, coming in here and there, and he's, uh, yeah, always pitching in doing everything you can. Uh, Mike from Dogman Homestead. We have Brad and Deborah. Uh, their new channel is Butt Nuggets Homestead. I'll try to put links to everybody down below. Uh, then I had Greg the Great here. Uh, a lot of you have remembered him from years past, helping me out, still helping me out. Still letting me borrow all of his tools and uh, yeah, just wonderful. And then uh, really the stars. This really only came together in, uh, in a couple days was I knew I needed some help getting that kitchen done before uh, before I could could move in. And so some new friends, they're new from Colorado, they don't have a YouTube channel, they're here meeting people, and they are my heroes now. They are seriously my heroes now. So yeah, I'll hook them up with chickens, I yeah, I'll do whatever I can to, to pay it back or pay her forward. But they went to town on the chicken. So Marcel and Denise, thank you so much. Along uh, uh, Sherry from the Africa Tiny House, she came down with them. Uh, they were all able to carpool together. Uh, they stayed here, uh, you know, overnight, and they worked all day Tuesday, and they worked uh, till late afternoon today. We'll go inside that kitchen here in a minute to show you their handiwork. But yeah, they were here, and Floyd and Rita, they were here on the birthday bash, and uh, yeah, in the area, they came out and helped, and uh, filled up, started filling up my woodshed and got the piles of firewood out of my way so that, you know, that's less work I need to do before I can start uh, putting my electric fencing up and uh, helped clean up the front porch, scrape off some of the, the uh, I don't know, fungus that's growing on the handrails and just pitching in wherever they could. Uh, very helpful and sharing their experiences and knowledge and uh, did I miss anybody? Uh, Lindsay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Lindsay was over here pitching in uh, everything. Um, oh, I think that's all. I was here, kind of. I sat down for a few minutes. I couldn't think of anybody else who was here. And like I said, this just all came together quickly. And uh, yeah, so Marcel and Denise took the lead on the kitchen progress. So we're gonna go have to take a look at that. That was the main, uh, the main goal, I guess, was uh, progress on the kitchen, and that goal was definitely achieved. And I, I love it. Some people are gonna love it. Some of you, are, of you are gonna hate it. You know what? If you hate it, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look at your house and tell you what I hate about it. So yeah, that is what it is. Uh, yeah, I chose pegboard. Let's talk about it. All right, we're coming in. The, the kitchen is not finished, but I'll, I'll go over that. Yes, uh, so before the cabinets, 
could be set in place and leveled up and the countertop placed on the cabinets and the kitchen sink cut out before all of that something had to be done about the wall there was the window that was taken out and the original idea was to cut off boards from the wall and then try to replicate it and that was just a lot of work and it wouldn't have lightened it up and so yeah this coming together in a hurry i only had a few days to find something uh, that could become the new kitchen accent wall and as i was shopping uh pegboards just kind of came up i mean i was looking at tongue and groove i was looking at shiplap i was looking at like a stone uh fake stone paneling all very expensive many hundreds of dollars uh to do this kind of space in your traditional uh traditional way so as i was looking through the paneling on you know what can i get cheap enough and this stuff was about a little over 20 bucks for a four foot by eight foot sheet so this whole thing was a hundred dollars hundred dollars for the walls it is pegboard it's white coated it's easily to clean easy to uh to wipe off uh, you don't want to get it wet a lot but i've there are some other uh plans we've got in the works it is not done yet I still need to do trim and uh, like there, that's where the stove will go. I'll be doing a hood vent. I'll probably do a shelf above the stove. I'll be running uh, uh, trim down the seams at the wall above the countertop. And yeah, this is just wonderful. And of course this room, it's not square. It's not square at all. There's like a two inch drop and nothing is, right so that was that was a struggle uh getting the getting the pegboard up there and getting these uh, uh kitchen uh, lower cabinets leveled and uh starting off with them level helps you get the countertop because i yeah when i put an egg on the on the countertop i don't want to roll in all over the place <laughs> that was a running joke the past few days but yeah they got all the lower cabinets uh leveled and that's the area where the refrigerator should go. So the countertop's going to go right up uh, to the refrigerator. All this pegboard, you know, it's not going to stay that uh, neat and tidy because I can get some pegs for the pegboards and hang up some coffee mugs and frying pans and the whisks for when I'm doing my scrambled eggs and whatever I want to put up there is going to be handy and right there. And it's uh, pretty easy to clean. Like behind the sink, I could uh, I can put some type of a splash guard there. And uh, also above the stove, I can put some type of a splash guard there. And with the pegboard, it'll be so easy to, uh, to install something like that. But yeah, I just think this kitchen is going to be awesome. It already is. You know, a lot of the people were saying of how dark it was in this kitchen with those dark cabinets and the dark ceiling. And uh, yeah. So that, that white pegboard and, uh, and the light color countertop really sets it off. And you know what? There was already so much wood, different types of wood in here, that I didn't want to go, you know, if you, it'd have to be a painted white, like shiplap thing. Um, but I definitely didn't want any other type of wood. And that's why I went with those countertops, more of a, a fake granite on the countertops. And I just think it lightens up this kitchen. It's functional. And as I always tell people, I'm more about the function than the aesthetics. And then you can't get much more functional than the, than the pegboards. So I got my dishwasher there. I'll have the refrigerator, sink, the plumbing isn't done. And uh, yeah, my refrigerator and the stove will go right there. Those are, I still need those until I get closer to being moved. But I just, I just love this kitchen. I'm gonna have so much fun in here. I'm gonna be able to keep it nice and tidy and organized with all the counter space and the, and the cabinets. And uh, yeah, this wall over here, I, I don't show it very often, but yeah, upper cabinets and counter space and lower cabinets and behind this door, there's uh, uh, shelves and a lower cabinet. So this kitchen, I envision seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of good times. A lot of good times and hopefully a lot of decent enough food. All right, there you go. There's the tour of my almost new kitchen. And boy, I, you know, the,
pre the pegboard, the price was right, the availability was right. Because, like I said, I only had a couple days uh, to, to find that. And that's what the supply run was uh, the other day, was to get the last few pegboards uh, that they had in stock there. Uh, which I ordered online and, and just hoped that they didn't sell them before I got there. So yeah, on a quick turnaround, on a quick budget, I am not here trying to win the Better Homes and Gardens Award. I'm trying to, to have something that look, looks decent and is uh, budget friendly. And I tell you, $100 for those five sheets, maybe $110. Uh, you can't beat that. You really can't beat that. Uh, the 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 one that I liked the most, other than the pegboard, was the fake stone paneling stuff, and that was like forty-four dollars a sheet. So uh, what was that? That had been you know two hundred twenty dollars, and that would have been the cheapest option. The shiplap and the uh, tongue and groove, uh, you know, which both would have need to be painted, so that's another expense on top of it. Those options would have been three hundred plus dollars for shiplap or tongue and groove, some of your more traditional materials. So, you know, this is an old rustic cabin, and I think the pegboard fits great. Time will tell. Okay, folks, I have to get home. Uh, yeah, so many things to do. I also need to take a break because I am done. I've been done for about a week now, but now I'm fried and over and done. So I'm probably going to take a few days off. I might split this. I don't know what's going on. My brain is feeling like my body. Thanks for watching. Thanks for everything. This is more than a dream come true. Um, not just the work getting done, but the, the real lifelong friendships that are, that are being made. And I, I do believe that. Uh, we've had a lot of fun. You know, sometimes we're standing around just... Uh, talking and gabbing and sharing stories and that that was as wonderful to see as it was the you know the sink getting, getting cut out of the countertop um, yeah and it's uh, it's a privilege to be to be known by those people and to know them and so thank you take it easy everybody did you two miss me last night yeah did you two miss me last night